the law and you a look at laws in st vincent and the grenadines which affect our daily lives the law and you presented by lawyer panel r campbell qc and brought to you on svg tv as a public service ladies and gentlemen brothers and sisters boys and girls greetings welcome to another presentation in this public service nation building series the law and you this is program number 854 coming to you on Monday the 6th of March 2017. On this program, I will speak to you on the topic, The Voices of the People. But before getting into the topic, rather a lot of preliminaries this evening, so the program itself would be reasonably short. I begin the preliminaries as usual by sending condolences to all families which have suffered recent bereavements and I will not name some of the deceased but my sympathies go out to all who mourn. Let me now say happy birthday belatedly to Bishop Eldon Mercury who had his magnificent Thanksgiving service yesterday and he surely blessed the hearts of all who attended that service. May you keep on growing in grace my brother Bishop Mercury. And speaking of birthdays, belated 60th birthday to my brother Ashley Bernard Maxman, the husband of Mrs. Debbie Maxman of Rockies. He went away for his birthday, but I'm sure he had an enjoyable time. In your absence, your elder brother, Bernard B.T. Maxman, celebrated his on Valentine Day. He opted to invite the family to a picnic at Black Point because our relative Samuel was celebrating his anniversary. And so we journeyed to Black Point two Saturdays ago for what was a beautiful family picnic. Thank you, Bitty the elder and bitty the younger if you can call 60 young excuse me now <coughs> 50 years in the life of an organization is a very long time and one of our local cultural organizations is celebrating its 50th year. I refer to the Starlift Steel Orchestra, which was officially formed in 1967 and this year, 2017, 50 years of existence. Among other things, Starlift would be having a church service at the Kingstown Methodist Church this coming Sunday. 12th of March at 4 o'clock in the afternoon and me and my family are looking forward to attending that service if only for the reason that on the 15th of December 1973 yes 1973 the Stalif Steel Orchestra became the first steel band in the history of St. Vincent and Grenadines to have played in a church. On that date, Saturday the 15th December 1973, the Stalif Steel Orchestra played in the Kingston Methodist Church at the wedding ceremony of a certain P.R. Campbell and his bride then Julie Peters. Thank you Stalif. It was not just a historic occasion but a memorable one 
and I congratulate you on all the achievements you have earned over the 50 years of your existence and as I said my family and I look forward to joining you in the Kingston Methodist Church this Sunday it would be a sort of reunion for Julie and myself and the Starleaf Seed Orchestra. And I revere the memory of the late Walton Tanny Peters, who was very much instrumental in the arrangements we had way back in 1973. Um, The controller of Inland Revenue and his staff and members of the public attended a service at the Kingstown Methodist Church this morning starting at 7.30 to mark the beginning of Tax Awareness Week and I want to say how blessed I was to have been part of the congregation. Congratulations to the controller and his staff. Excellent work you have been doing, particularly by way of educating the public about tax matters. And let me commend the Reverend Adolph Davis on that homily he delivered this morning. Now, over recent years, Reverend Davis has emerged as one of my favorite preachers. He has a style which appeals to me. I think he has blessed anointing on him. He seems to be able to pinpoint in a passage of scripture the relevant lessons we should learn and the relevant inspiration we should take from the word of God continue the excellent work you have been doing my brother Davis uh, next point I have noted because I, I had to note these things down there were so many of them Tomorrow in St. Lucia, the Court of Appeal will hear arguments on the St. Vincent and the Grenadines election petitions. And in due course, we will get a decision from the Court of Appeal. But let me remind viewers that whatever the decision is or will be, there can be no further appeal because our constitution has specified that in election petition appeals there is no appeal to the Privy Council in London. So when the judges hear this petition tomorrow in St. Lucia, they will give a decision which will bring finality to the legal processes. We look forward in due course to hearing what that decision will be. And uh, finally, on Saturday evening, following a very successful OECS Bar Association meeting on Saturday, there was a special dinner at the island at which three of our leading legal stalwarts were honored. Mr. Emery Robertson, Mr. Carlyle Dogan QC, and Mr. Arthur Williams were all honored by the OECS Bar for their not just years of service, but their years of excellent service in the legal field. Those three brothers 
all happened to have served nobly, not just in the bar association, but they have given political service to this country. And I want to say congratulations to my three brothers. Sorry I could not be personally present at the dinner on Saturday night, not having been well. But I was ably represented by my wife and two daughters. And they told me all about what happened at that function. All right, well, now let me turn to the substance of the program, having done the preliminaries, Voices of the People. I am going to deal with three publications. Well, one was not really a publication except to myself. It was a letter which I mentioned two weeks ago. Remember, I did not have any program last week. And let me apologize for not having been able to come on the program last week. Remember, I had told you that I had received a letter from a parent. Well, I will just not read the letter or not read extracts from the letter, but just indicate that it was a parent raising concerns about the high cost of the educational tour, which had been arranged by one of our secondary schools. I just want to highlight the central point she made. She said, parents, according to my grandmother, do not hang your hat where your hand cannot reach because this parent was saying that basically if you can't afford to send your student on a tour because of the expense don't go through abnormal lengths to do so simply tell the child you cannot make it for those parents who find it possible to send their children on educational tours, by all means go ahead because these tours are very useful in the education uh, and the uh, general development of the children. So if you can afford to send your children on educational tours, by all means do so. If you can't afford, then tell the children you can't afford. The other two voices appeared in articles published on Eyewitness News. One was published on the 3rd of March called My Ride to School, which I would like to read. It is by a female secondary school student. It says, quote, I do not live close to Kingstown, so it takes me about 45 minutes on a van to get to school daily and 45 minutes again, depending on the traffic, to get back home in the evening. I, along with two friends, will wait at the bus stop and if we are lucky, we might meet up with two or three other schoolmates on the way. My friends usually friend up with the conductors to get a front seat sometimes and sometimes I wonder if there is not a kind of attitude where if I don't smile up with them I will not get any good seat in the van. I don't want to have any situation where I get touched up too much but my friends say I am acting stush sometimes cause I don't let them pass their place with me. I am not sure mommy them know what's happening these days all about the place. It has so much porn in school on my friend's phone. Some of the girls in my class are just doing with each other what they see on the phones. I find it hard to concentrate especially cause it's like carnival morning and evening on the van. I go to church, but the rest of the time it's just dirty words and bad girl music I'm hearing all the time on the van. 
Sometimes the bad words just playing over and over again and the songs are all about girls and what they are putting themselves in and what they want. If they do not watch porn, then why are we hearing it still? I usually get headaches and have homework till late and have to get up so early to get ready and pack my lunch. I'm not sure how many people are supposed to ride in the van, but most of the time I am squeezed up. And if I'm lucky to get a good seat, I am under somebody's arm and I smell like them by the time I get where I'm going. I see our international airport and wonder where we are going in St. Vincent for school children. Is everything for tourists? They talk about education revolution, but what about the right to school? I doubt the leaders and politicians and those kinds of rich people ever ride in a van. They need to do it to see what we are facing every day. And you cannot say anything because everybody's silent or vexed. I do not think this is fair. I am calling for love to not be only in the air, but also on the ground where we are. This is a letter which, or an, an extract from a publication on Eyewitness News by somebody calling herself female secondary school student and I do not think it is necessary for me to elaborate on anything in that letter. Another Publication on Eyewitness News, this time published on the 4th of March. And the headline is Beckwith Group to Clamp Down on Unauthorized Easter Parties. Now, this one is very interesting. I wouldn't read you all of it, but I'll read you most of it. And then I'll make a few comments generally. The Beckway Onshore Activities Management Committee, BOAM, on Saturday warned the public against buying tickets for parties on the island during the Easter weekend that they have not sanctioned. Quote, any events that are being advertised on air, in the printed press, or online without the proper authorization is in breach of your agreement with the committee. Unquote. Chair of the committee, Augustus M. Carlos Williams, said in a press statement. He further said that these unauthorized activities are, quote, a direct assault on the mandate of the committee a blatant disregard for the welfare of all residents of Beckway, and an offense of the laws of St. Vincent and the Grenadines for the governance of such activities. This is indeed unacceptable and will not be tolerated. Know that you will be fittingly responded to and the consequences of action appropriated by the committee and the community." Unquote. He said, <clears throat> in the statement, Williams gives a list of events that have been sanctioned by the BOAMC and the relevant authorities to take place on Beckway for Easter weekend 2017. He said these events would be, quote, accorded the courtesy and privileges on court of the committee. The events are the Mojito party on April 14, the Angie Entertainment RUM party 
Castaway and the Party Nation private event on April 15. Mutiny, a rebel media famous event. And the Limer's Cruise on April 16th. And Nikki's Cooler Breakfast Party on April 17th. Speaking to Eyewitness News on Sunday, Williams noted that the committee was established in 2015 with the support of the Ministry of Tourism, Sports and Culture and is responsible for the, quote, the synergetic coordination and facilitation of events slash activities on Beckway for the mutual benefit of all. Quote, what has been happening over the years, what we have seen, is that the trends relative to Easter regatta have been slowly going past us, unquote. He noted that the emphasis of Easter regatta in Beckway is sailing. Quote, but the past couple of years, there has been the introduction of a number of onshore events and more so those of parties, fits of an inclusive nature. And we have recognized that they have become the most prominent element relative to, which ought not to be, unquote, Williams told Eyewitness News. He said the people of Beckway have been complaining that the essence of Easter regatta in Beckway is being lost and there is need for balance. William Sola Witness News that residents of Beckway are not calling for a stop to onshore activities such as parties. He noted, however, that BOAMC is more focused on the preservation of elements of Beckway culture such as the greasy pole, maypole dancing, cake dancing, and ring games. Quote, But what is being asked by the people is for there to be a balance. That is why our emphasis is for there to be balance for all concerns. So yes, we know that, especially with the younger people. They want these parties, these hypes, but we cannot allow for there to be over the period of three, four days, five days, just exclusive parties that are going on and the emphasis of what Beckway is, Beckway culture, Beckway identity, the sailing is lost. William said that Beckwayans want a balance between traditional activities such as coconut boat sailing and parties. Quote, and that is what we are trying to safeguard, the regatta here and back with the sailing, becoming another Union Island scenario where it is like an extension of Carnival, he told Eyewitness News. In a press statement, William said that each promoter company has signed with the committee terms and conditions of engagement and his committee will hold each to the letter and spirit accordingly. He said the promoters are reminded that the committee reserves the right to revoke its support and sanction for any event, promoter and or company found in breach of the same. He said further, <coughs> There is always dialogue, there is always open communication. And if uh, an, an applicant is not satisfied, they can appeal and the committee will try to arrive with them at some amicable solution. He, however, said in the statement that the committee and the community will respond firmly to all disrespect and the disregard to the principles and processes set up for the strategic development of Beckway as a major tourism product and unique community values and life. Now, those who have access to eyewitness news <coughs> and who are interested in that subject, I would urge you to look up that news item.
published on the 4th of March and read it for yourself. By the Beque Onshore Activities Management Committee. That points to a very important development. A clash of culture. The traditional activities and modern activities. And you know, there is something to be said for what the committee is insisting on, namely balance. Bekwe is a relatively small community. And if they are to preserve the cultural expressions for which Bekwe has become world famous, they have to take active, energetic, and in cases, aggressive steps to make sure that these traditional activities are not totally swept aside for new activities which really haven't got much to do with culture. So that I'm urging all concerned to be sensitive and to cooperate with the committee which is trying to do something sensible, namely to preserve genuine cultural norms and forms. Bekwe is a small ecosystem. Noise has been a development which is doing untold harm to us in all parts of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Noise. Excessive noise. I will deal with noise fairly shortly in the next few programs. Because I have read a recent article detailing the medical effects on one's hearing, the effect on one's brain, the effect on one's physical system of persistent noise that leads to sleep deprivation. A few days ago, a lady wrote a, an article in Eyewitness News complaining about the activity held at the former E.T. Joshua Airport, which went on till minutes to three on a Sunday morning, having started the Saturday night. The law has specific provisions to which nobody seems to be paying heed. It is no point our inviting people to come here as tourists to be assaulted by incessant and persistent loud, annoying noise. We are competing with the rest of the Caribbean. And if when people come to St. Vincent and the Grenadines, they are treated with unreasonable levels of noise wherever they go and can't get a good night's sleep, you think they are going to come back here? Or you think they are going to encourage persons of their acquaintance to come to a noisy place? No. 
and we should be sensitive to the need for tourism development. So that let us be sensible. And as the Bekwe committee has said, they're not trying to stop people having their fets and their parties. But two things must be taken consideration into consideration. One, the volume of the music played, and two, the length of time over which it is played. You can't keep going until wee hours of the morning when people should be sleeping and keeping them awake. All you need is a sensible use of the volume control knob. But more about that next time. So that is all from this evening's program of the law and you. Glad to be back with you live as it were. I look forward to being of further service to you next week, Monday DV, for another presentation in this public service nation building series, The Law and You. Do have a pleasant week, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, boys and girls, and may the good Lord continue to bless us all. The Law and You, a look at laws in St. Vincent and the Grenadines which affect our daily lives. The Law and You, presented by lawyer panel R. Campbell, QC, and brought to you on SVG TV as a public service.